Hi guys, welcome back. Um, as you saw last time, we built the engine, we got it running. All good. Since then, the engine's probably been run for about an hour. Faultless. Um, she likes a bit of heat from cold. Um, I've tried, I've started it with no heat from cold. It takes a bit of going, but um, fires up straight away. Perfect. No leaks, no funny oil pressure problems. Anyway, blah blah blah. Right. So today, what we're going to do is start with mounting the alternator. So I've got myself a nice little short skinny um, drive belt now. So I've decided the alternator is going to go bang upright in the centre there. Um, yeah, so we now need to make some brackets. So my intention is at the moment is to bring some flat bar up here and up here then we're going to build off them and then build off this one then we're going to triangulate and strengthen and then in the meantime we need to incorporate our tensioner but I think the best thing is is to start with mounting to the engine block so if we cut up some strips of card, the same dimension as the material that we're going to use, then we can get it nice, get the holes, then we can overlay the card onto the material we're going to use and drill the holes, then it should be perfect then, shouldn't they? So this, this is the only heavy duty flat bar I can find. I think it's about 12 by, I don't know, 40 mil. A bit over the top, but at least we know, know it'll last then, don't we? So we've got the alternator loosely mounted. As you see, I've just put some threaded bar in at the moment so I can get me my distance left to right. Um, yeah, it looks quite good, it's all drilled. So now I'm going to find something decent now. So I'm gonna get a measure from there to there. And then something we can actually weld into part of the structure and then we can brace down off it later. Mm. So I've just put this in temporary for now. Uh, I've put a collar in the end so it retains the, the dimension so this is always going to, so we don't want to get any flop up and down even though we've got a bit of flop there at the moment. So I've decided now to tension it by swinging, by swinging the alternator rather than a remote tensioner. Why have I done that? less things to go wrong and it's potentially easier. So I've started to cut out some, some slotted pieces on this 6mm by 40 flat bar. So now we need to make this fit, we need to make this fit to these. So to do that we'll take the alternator off, we'll make these fit the alternator and then we'll work out brackets to go from here to here. Let's go! Mm. So the alternator is now hung, um, doesn't look very pretty at the moment but after we weld it all up and cut all the excesses off and X, Y, Z, it's cut a light there. But alignment wise is quite good. Um, I can shim the um, alternator pulley um, using like copper sheet or something like that to shim it and then get it right because it's for some reason it's moved over but I don't think I had this properly tight earlier. So that gave me a false representation, but hey, we live and learn. So alignment wise is really good, so parallel to the engine. Um, I predicted after I've welded all these, we're going to get some twist up high. So I've actually welded a, like a, a bar into the back here, because we're going to be making a heat exchanger. 
So once the heat exchanger is on, it gives us something to screw to, mount to, rather than relying on all these M6 bolts. Anyway, so back to the alternator, yeah. So it's really good, so we're going to take all this off, weld it up, clean it up, um, put it back on, then we'll give the engine a run to make sure that the belt goes around nicely. So we've now got some adjustments. So you can see, like, we can, we can actually swing the alternator. Um, and there as well, it's a bit, I've, I've left the, the, the top balls a bit tight at the moment, but yeah, so that's kind of cool. All right, weld her up. Okay, so the bracket is off the engine now. Um, as you can see here, I've had to do a bit of jiggery pokery, so I'm going to need to weld all this back up. Um, so I'm going to weld the whole thing up now, hopefully it stays straight. And then um, we'll give it a quick sort of, quick buff, but um, we won't paint it just yet because we've got a lot more steel components to make and we may as well sandblast them. So she's mounted back up. Um, alignment looks quite good to be honest with you. Um, yeah, this looks pretty smart. I know with an alternator you're not meant to run it with no battery. So we need to put a load on her, don't we? I've had to dig around in my bit of a scrap yard for two batteries which aren't flat. I kind of collect all batteries, don't know why. I think one day I'll take them to the scrap yard. But anyway, so I found two batteries. Combined voltage of the both is 21.4. So I've now connected it to me alternator. So I've got a good ground. And we've got a good connection to the battery. We're, we're probing it here and here. And I don't really like running engines inside, but I've opened the big doors at the front, so. Uh, should be good. Right, let's see if she starts, because she had me run for a few days. And also, let's see if it doesn't throw a bell, and uh, it goes round like we want it to. Even put safety glasses on for this. Pretty well regulated, isn't it? Didn't really change. But you think we should turn it off and then we'll have a look at the voltage. As you can see, it's descending quite nice, so the batteries have taken a charge at least. Um, I was expecting it to go wrong, but no. You can actually hear the old stage from below. Or was it just an internal cooling fan? I don't know. But here, there's quite, um, quite a wind to it. Until the internal fans working well. So obviously at the moment we're not monitoring how much current we're, we're um, producing because uh, my clamp meter is on the boat, like everything's on the boat these days. But bonus, that really helped, works really well. Running 
Small case alternators, as in like what's in your everyday car and stuff like that. Uh, the main problem with these alternators on in a marine application is they're normally tied to your engine. So your engine's chugging along at 1,000 revs, 1,500 revs. The, other, the alternator generally isn't turning fast enough. So the internal cooling in it, it's not moving enough air to keep the alternator cool. But hence, we're running this, we, we can tailor the RPM to suit the alternator. That's the plan in a way. Um, and with this alternator, I can get parts all over the world. I can, I can, it's a Bosch alternator, there's Bosch part numbers all over it. I can just Google the part number, I can find the part. So it's gonna be rectifier, isn't it? I think the actual regulator rec rectifier on this alternator is very cheap, so I'm gonna buy a spare anyway. So I'll have a spare regulator and spare belt. So alternator's good, tick. Right, so now it starts starting to mount all the um, engine controls and fuse boxes and so like low current isolators, um, heat plug relay, X, Y, Z. So they're going to be mounting it all in a little plastic box, which I got it from our local sort of food shop. I was shopping with Gemma I was like, ooh, boy stuff. Lunchbox. So you've got an airtight stackable, freezer okay, microwave okay, dishwasher okay. So it should be able to withstand the temperatures and, I don't know, a splash of water. Okay, so we're going to try and mount all this in here, then we'll start running some cables to it. Okay, so we've made our splash proof box. So we've got a, a main isolator here, which is basically, it's gonna be able to just turn everything off. And then if you wanted to, you can actually take the key out so no one else could use it. Probably won't do that, because I'll lose the key. So we've got a little six way fuse box. Probably already seen these, when a fuse blows, Gives you like a little LED indication, which I think is quite nice. So yeah, we've got some actuator pins. It's got a pickup from our speed sensor. Obviously our battery inputs. I think this was like a remote, a remote idle control. Don't know what droop is. I'm guessing there's a button you can go for idle and output. Don't know what the auxiliary is. I have got all the paperwork, so I'll have a look through that. So I think on the motor, it's going to be mounted around here somewhere because this here is going to be the port side of the boat. So it's going near, well it's going where the second set of batteries are. So we're going to have this here. So when, when we go in, we can open this up, we can turn it on, turn it off, check the fuses and adjust the speed controller okay so start throwing some wires at her So we've got a little sandwich control box. So we've got the engine control here. Um, this is the heater plug relay. So it's got like general fuses that's going to be fusing. We've got the 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 dashboard, which gives our analytics for the engine. 
So that's all going to come into this little junction box here. Then we're going to have this. This is the main start and heat and engine controls, which is going to be controlled off this panel here, which is going to go on there. This is all going to be remotes like upstairs in like the saloon or something like that, so we can start and start whenever we want, somewhere nice. Um, we'll also be able to start and stop on the front of the generator. So yeah, our little sandwich box is going to be mounted, but it's going to be mounted to the frame, not the engine, because the engine is going to be shaking and stuff like that, so we're going to try and keep this stiller. So it's going to be mounted around here somewhere, so we can now start working out the engine wiring. Put the control sandwich box on this piece of wood here to simulate when it's going to be on its frame. Um, so yeah, we're all wired in, said earlier. So I've just connected up the battery, so we've got our heater plug wiring going across. Wiring to the start of XYZ, this will all be neatened up because we're doing work around it on the exhaust. So, um, so we've got our big, I'm going to call it my communication cable, which goes into this is feeding the dashboard. So, we've got our start stop, um, oil warning light, heater plug warning light, stop. This is our, this is our heater plug switch. So there's no fuses in there at the moment, but I'm just going to turn the power on. So, so we'll turn the power on. Okay, so someone's trying to draw a current. So what's trying? To, yeah, so it's the um, it's the control, but there's no fuse in it yet. So maybe we'll turn the so we we'll turn the ignition on. So that's now trying to draw a current. Right, so let's put some fuses in there. Let's start to see what happens. So we'll go for the Main ignition. We've got main ignition now. That's gone hot. This is good. So we've now got our oil pressure senders wired in. So if we turn. Oh yeah. And I put a buzzer as well on the heater plugs. So when the heater plugs come on. You pretty much know it's going to be running soon. So now put a 25 amp fuse for the heat plug relay. It's all good. I need my clamp meter to measure the current. So let's put a fuse in the. This is for the control. Alright, so we need to mount our solenoid. I actually made an error because. On here it says actuator and to me an actuator is something like this which is basically driven forwards and driven backwards and I thought this controlled naturally and I couldn't quite work out how it works but after my very limited research there's not much on it you use a solenoid so a solenoid you can basically proportion the voltage going across the solenoid so we've got quite a big solenoid there so that's going to pull on our throttle lever, so we need to mount it up. So there's a nice bolt here we can mount on, and then I'm going to task my mum. Hi. <laughs> my mum's come down halfway through me doing this, so we might as well put it to work, haven't we? Yeah. She's not. She doesn't want to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna fast. I said you make a nice cardboard template. Cardboard templates are really, really rewarding. I'm ready. And then, oh, okay, she's already ready. So she's already committed. Full commitment. Cool. So my mum made a cardboard bracket, didn't you, mum? What the hell's that? <laughs> but then we, as you saw, then as you saw, we overlaid the cardboard bracket into the available piece of angle material, and then I was expecting to have to shout at her and tell her she did it wrong or something. But look at it, perfect. Kibota might be knocking at your door asking for like. 
Only on a part time basis then. Only on a part -time. time. So now we need to bolt this up, put the cell load across, screw it on. So I've just fired the engine up uh, with our new cylinder. So by the noise, I'm going to speak up. Um, so we put the cylinder on again. So yeah, I just did some filming, but the engine was running, so it's quite difficult to listen here for the camera to pick up the audio. Anyway, so our little solenoid, I, did, I never knew you could proportion solenoids. I always thought they were just uh, uh, or on or off or whatever, but no, you can. So I was basically putting my crank sensor through there. I've not mounted it yet because I wanted to actually test if it would actually pick it up, but it's picking up on the ring gear. So then it was monitoring the engine speed, then it was actually picking up the RPM slightly and then regulating regulating the RPM, which is like quite impressed with this little guy, eh? So now we need to make a proper mount for the the crank sensor. Yay! So yeah, we're now starting to register coolant temperature, which is good. Um, the oil temperature one isn't linked up because I'm going to be using that for the raw water. Um, oil pressure isn't working. The sender's good, but there's a problem here. Maybe it's maybe maybe this only works when when it's got an RPM signal, but we haven't got a sensor yet wired to the RPM signal. So hopefully they correlate. So because my mum's here helping, she said that she's going to um, go and clean the kitchen. Let's try and sneak up on her. Actually works unless you put it on too fast. <laughs> 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 so, I'll do it before and after. Faster before. Oh, and your mum won't make you drink. Oh, look at it, it's, it's actually stainless. <laughs> It works. Awesome job. There you go. Quick update there. Um, I think I should let her know that we've got more cups. So we've got the dashboard up, up and running. All the switches, the stops, the... Um, we fitted a crank sensor. A bit, bit rubbish, but it kind of works. Uh, it's got all the speed control, fuse box, heat plug relay. Um, so I've got the alternator mounted. The belt, I'm amazed that I've not had to touch this at all. I put it back on, started it, absolutely perfect. So we can now tension it. We've been making the batteries charge. Um, slight rejig of some wiring here and there. A few more wires and stuff to tidy away so my mum made us a lovely bracket here to house our solenoid the solenoid works for I don't know, half an hour or something like that but we had it set quite far out so when the operation oh, this all right. when the operation it, it, the plunger wasn't going anywhere near in so where's my windings going? So I've actually damaged the solenoid, unfortunately, but it was just one I had lying around, so I need to have a look to see if I can find some more. Um, so yeah, I could I could put the engine into idle, so a little switch on the front here, um, and then it would speed itself back up, and you can change all like the, it's not the droop, what's it called? Um, 
What's it called? It's got a, a speed ramping. So you basically go from idle to power, and then it go up and it'll hold an RPM. It's working absolutely perfect until the solenoid got a bit hot. So I need to look into that. But yeah, everything else is really good. So um, next time, I think we're going to be finishing off here. I'll probably finish off this off camera to be honest with you. But then we're going to be making a, a new exhaust. So the exhaust is going to have a heat exchanger. So going through the heat exchanger will be antifreeze. And then it'll go through another heat exchanger, which will then use raw water um, to cool the coolant. Um, that's, only, that's the only way of really doing it when we're out of the water. But then instead of raw water, we'll be using another antifreeze circuit, a pump circuit, to basically then go for a radiator, which is going to be hung over the side of the boat or in the cabin for when it's wind, so we could heat the boat. So yeah, cool. So thank you very much for watching. Um, thanks, thanks to my mum for doing some cleaning and making a bracket, didn't you? I made a bracket. Yeah. Template. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So yeah, see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.